Today's Bible study is titled Would Not Have You to Be Ignorant. Our verses today are the introduction to Christ's revelation through the Apostle Paul regarding what is commonly referred to as the rapture of the body of Christ or church. Many try to mix this unique revelation with scriptures regarding Christ's earthly teachings prior to the cross, but Christ's earthly ministry to Israel was a time of prophecy, not mystery, so he was not speaking of and to the body of Christ, which had yet to be revealed. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 14. Let's break this down. Christ's revelation to Paul, speaking to the body of Christ per the revelation of the mystery, begins with I would not have you to be ignorant. Again, this phrasing indicates that this revelation is part of a newly revealed truth given to Paul. And the first part of this revelation indicates it will address them which are asleep, a reference to those who were in Christ, having believed the gospel of grace, but subsequently died. And there is purpose in what is going to be said, as Paul continues. That ye sorrow not, even as others, which have no hope. Who are these others is clearly them who have not the hope that is only found in Christ, and it is regarding their reaction to departed loved ones who likewise had not this hope. And to clarify, the hope of salvation in this dispensation of the grace of God depends upon one hearing and believing the gospel of grace, in this life, and thereby being saved by grace through faith. There is no second chance beyond physical death. Continuing, Paul makes a statement with a lead-in question regarding the hope we have saying for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. As believers of the gospel which is defined as the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures, this question implies that there was such belief on their part, and ours. So, with the correct assumption that belief of the gospel is believing that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Titus 2 verse 13 speaks to this, saying looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, which we will learn is his coming in the air, Titus 4 verse 17. This, again, is part of Paul's mystery teaching to remove ignorance concerning them which are asleep and a lead into verse 15, which will provide complete clarity. Essentially Paul's statement is that those who died in Christ, by a gospel belief, God will bring with him, resurrection, at the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture. This is often confused with the coming at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. But that coming is according to prophecy, is earthly and pertains to Israel, while this coming is according to the mystery, is heavenly and pertains to the body of Christ. The Thessalonians are commonly believed to have been troubled by some teachings that made them have doubts about the ultimate destination of those who died in Christ. This revelation through Paul eliminates any basis for doubt that the believer's destination is resurrection. Believer, if you are in Christ, your eternal destiny is to be with him. Thank you for listening to this Bible study today.